Hey everybody, and welcome to my video introducing the Kodak Retina-A Type 015. This is a folding viewfinder camera with no meter. This one has shutter speeds, and I believe they all had the same shutter on them. This has shutter speeds of 1 second to 1 500th and bulb, and it has M and X flash syncs at any speed. So any flash you would use in electronic, a modern flash you just bought at the store today even would work on this at any speed. Kodak designed the 1A for as a mid to high end viewfinder camera. Viewfinders being a step down from rangefinder cameras. The difference is a viewfinder has a single viewfinding optic here. A rangefinder will have two optics coming in and one in the back and then you when you focus the lens, some mirrors move around inside of the rangefinder and focus the image, or up, actually they properly align the image, and that's how you know it's in focus. With a viewfinder, you know it's in focus because you've done some math and set some settings correctly, and I'll show you a little bit how to do that later in the video. The Kodak 1A had very high quality production. In fact, the Kodak Retina line, the 1A and the 2A that I have, are single-handedly responsible for changing my opinion about Kodak cameras, which was that they were just not great. Very basic, lower quality optics, very low const qu construction quality. But these retinas are stunning, stunning cameras. This, uh, the 1A is a stepped down version of the 2A with no rangefinder and a slower lens. The 2A has an f2 lens, this has an f2, uh, an f3.5 lens, which is significantly smaller. These were made for Kodak by Nagel Camera Work in Stuttgart, Germany, from 1951 to 1954. Now that's what everything on the internet said in consensus, however, um, advertisements and Schneider serial numbers, Schneider's being the, the lens manufacturer, indicate that some of these would have been made and sold as early as 1949 for construction and sales with advertisements in 1950. Uh, in fact, uh, I saw somebody who referenced seeing an ad for these in a 1949 magazine. So the dates of 51 to 54 may not be accurate. There's a link to the retina uh, retina resource in my descriptions and the guys who run that the retina club uh, Have a very good handle on when they were made and if you have one of these you can send them their, send them your serial number If they haven't up put the table on the internet yet to find out when your retina was made This was preceded by the retina 1 concurrent with the 2a and followed by the 1b So if you have your retina, we're going to take a look at some of the cameras features So here we are on the top of the camera, and we'll start on the outside. Here, these are the strap lugs. Uh, that's where you would start, you, you would attach your camera strap. These also came with leather cases that would have a strap with them. Here is the film rewind knob, and it has on it a film type memo. And so the film types are in a ring around the outside, and then there's a little black triangle, and you can rotate this to indicate the type of film which is in your camera. And it's hard to rotate it under the best of circumstances, even harder when you're reaching over your camera. So anyway, so you, uh, pushing down on this and then rotating the knob, you can rotate it to set to remind yourself of what type of film you have. Here's the accessory shoe with one significant flaw, the serial number being in the accessory shoe. And uh, so don't lose the accessory shoe. Here we've got the viewfinder. Here we have the shutter release button. This is the shutter skip. What's that actually called? This is the film sprocket release button. And, we'll, and that comes into play when you are loading the film. And it's also the unjam button. So if your shutter gets jammed or the camera gets jammed, you can hit that to unjam it. And here we have the film advance lever and the frame count window. And you can see this has um, 
a, uh, a sawtooth ring around it, that's because you have to manually set the number of frames uh, before you start taking pictures and the frames count down. And when we load film and I show you how to take a picture with this camera, you'll see a little bit more about what that means. Here on the front of the camera, basically what we have is the lens. We, we have, to be fair, we have actually on the front of the camera, we have the lens door. And remember when you're opening these to be careful with them. You don't want to let them jerk open because it can damage the bellows. Uh, and if you have film in there, it can actually pull the film off plane because the bellows expanding will create a vacuum and it can pull the, the film into the bellows. And best case scenario is you've ruined a couple of frames. Worst case scenario is you have a serious mess on your hand. Once you have the camera extended and opened like this, now you have the lens and the front of the camera becomes a sunshade on one side so if you can turn to have the sun on that side of it you'll reduce lens flare significantly here we have the shutter speed selector dial and you rotate this to select a different shutter speed this green switch is your uh, is your m and x flash sync switch here we have the focusing scale, and that's your hyperfocal scale. And what that does is that tells you at f16, if you're set at f16, right now everything from, I don't know exactly what this is. <laughs> uh, so everything from about infinity down to about six feet would be in focus right now. The retina one did not come with a printed focusing scale, which made focusing extremely difficult. Uh, so whoever owned this at one point hand etched a focusing scale into it, and good for them. They did a very, very fine job of it. It's uh, spot on accurate. At any rate, so, uh, and then this is the, the knob that you use to focus your Retina 1 with. Here's your aperture selector lever down here on the bottom. And so you can select anything from f3.5 up to f16 and a little bit beyond probably not not enough to make a difference and here is your flash pc port that is where you would connect a flash cable to close the lens there's a button on the top here and a sister button on the bottom and you push them down at the same time and push in and it closes. On the camera's bottom, there's not a whole lot to see. We have the tripod bushing. We have the film rewind button, which you have to hold down when you rewind the film. And then we have the cut front cover release. On the back, we have the viewfinder window and the Kodak Retina camera logo embossed in the back. On the side here is the camera's lock, the camera back lock. And so to open up the camera, just trip that and then it pops open a little bit and here we are inside of the camera this is the film cassette chamber and this is where you would place your film before you take a photo and or a bunch of photos to be accurate these four silver rails are your oh these four silver rails are the film guide rails and these raised areas help keep the film from moving up and down and then these four silver rails work with the film, pressure, yeah, the film pressure plate right here. So these raised areas help keep the film from moving up and down and so that so it travels properly. And then these four silver rails are the, the uh, help keep the film flat on plane and they work with the pressure plate, which we'll see in just a second, to help keep it flat. Here's the lens and the camera obscura, which uh, extends because of the bellows. This is the film tension sprocket right here and you can see it doesn't roll backwards until you release this and we'll see that in a minute when we run film through it. And this is the film take up spool, which is where the film is advanced to. On the film back itself, we have a film guide roller which helps keep the film moving properly and keep it flat on plane. And then we have the film pressure plate. And I kind of feel like maybe there was supposed to be a cassette spring at one point, but uh, if there was, it's not on my camera. One thing before we get into loading the film is to note that only some of the Retina 1As have a 
uh, have a film roller on them. Not all of them included that. And I think that was a later addition that they added to the product line. But I don't know exactly when that was added. So if you have a roll of 35 millimeter film and you want to go out and shoot some photos with your Retina 1A, I'll show you how to do that. So with your camera open, what you want to do is drop the film cassette into the cassette chamber and lower the film rewind knob into place. And then you just pull out a very short leader because this camera has a very short uh, internal dimension. You want to get this lined up so that the slot is open right here to the top. Feed in the leader. And so what I was doing there is I was hitting the film release and unjam button like that. And that allows me to advance the film. One more time for good measure, although honestly you really only need to do that twice when you load up the film. A third time was just overkill and also to demonstrate uh, what, what was happening. Now if you were taking an actual set of photos you would close this and lock it. And then you would hit the film release again and advance and advance once more for safe measure. Now let's say for instance that you were using a 20 exposure roll of film. Right now I'm on 16. I've got a you can only turn this clockwise. If you turn it counterclockwise, you will break it. So if it's a 20 exposure or 24 or 26, whatever the number is that you are using, you would set it to that number manually turning clockwise. Now, when you take a picture, and I'll show you how to do that, you open up the camera and you want it to click in place. If it doesn't click in place, then it will not be able to focus it at infinity or any other distance for that matter. So you want to be able to have it click in place. Then you want to estimate how far you are to your subject. And fortunately, mine's got this distance scale. Uh, if yours does not have it, then the, the focal range on this is from infinity down to uh, three feet, give or take, on the close end. And so you just have to estimate it, noting that it's not a straight line distribution. It is, uh, it, it, it's exponential growth. So if you know that you're 25 feet away from something, that's where mine is marked at 25 feet. Okay, so it's going to be focused-ish. And I want to do a 1 2 50th of a, shutter, of a second shutter speed. All right, set to that. Set the aperture down here on the bottom to whatever you need it to be. Push the photo, push the button to take your, shot, your picture. Advance, and you're set. And you'll notice now you're on frame 19. So that guy is going to count down. And when you've reached the last frame, it will stop advancing and should say frame one and then you're set to rewind. When you're not taking a picture you do want to keep your camera closed so that you can protect the bellows and the lens. When you're done taking photos and it's time to rewind your camera you'll push this button in and hold it all the while rewinding. And that's it should not make that clicking sound. That's a sign that I'm hold, not holding it down enough. And that should be set. There we go. So anytime you take a picture in real life, you want to have the film back closed so that you don't ruin your film. Film can only be exposed to light one time and then it's shot. So this film's already ruined, but I'm going to show you what's going on inside your camera when you take a picture so that you understand the mechanics of what's happening. Instead of opening it up and, sh and shooting actual expo exposures with the shutter, I'm just going to hit the release pin button here. And the film guide roller goes right here to keep some tension on this film. And that helps to make sure that it advances. So it's not going to advance quite properly right now, but uh, because the film guide roller is not in place. So when you, uh, when you take a picture, you would 
as it go through the process that I just showed you for take a pic to take a picture, push the shutter release, and then advance the film. And that did not advance anywhere close to a full frame, but when you use it for real, it would advance a full frame. Then when you've shot all of your frames, you push this button here and just rewind. That's the sound it makes when the leader comes off of the cassette. And then you would rewind it entirely into the cassette body so that you are set to go and get it developed. Uh, I reuse this film, so I'm not going to. Lift that up to remove it, put in your new film or call it a day, and you're good to go. So that's really the operation of your Retina 1A. Um, for, I've got here some special features and notes that will give you an idea of when your Retina 1A was made. So the earliest 1A models up to May 1951 had Comper Rapid Shutters and 50mm f3.5 Retina Xenar lenses. From 1951, and here you can see that I have a Synchro Comper Rapid, Synchro, Synchro Comper Shutter and a Retina Xenar 1 to 3.5 50mm lens. From June of 1951 until the end of the production run, they had synchro comper sh uh, shutters with MNX flash sinks and uh, one of at least four different lenses. There could have been a Schneider F 50mm f2.8, a Schneider uh, Retina Xenar f3.5, a Rodenstock 50mm f3.5, or a Kodak Ektar 50mm f3.5 and all of those were exceptionally good lenses. The f2.8 would have been the highest end of those so that people could order a 1A and decide which lens they wanted and have a little bit of variation. A 50 millimeter f2.0 lens back in the 50s was pretty good. In June, the June 1952 refit also included the film guide roller. So if your camera has the film guide roller, it was made after June 1952. And that's the, the silver roller in the camera's back. So along with the Retina 2A, this was the first Kodak body that had a built-in flash sync and film advance lever. And the film advance lever also cocked the shutter. So those that right there, the film advance lever cocking the shutter was a, a big change. And adding the flash sync was a big change. And this was the, these were the first ones, the 1A and the 2A, that had both of them. Some other cosmetic changes uh, throughout the production run included the size of the screws used in the accessory shoe from tiny, like mine, here you can see, to much larger. Uh, they can be re very reliably aged by their serial number, uh, but the guys who have that information have not that I've seen put it online, uh, unfortunately. Most online resources indicate that about 150,000 Retina 1A bodies were made. However, the Retina Historical Society, and um, which for, for which the operator of which is absolutely the, the best expert on all things Retina that I've ever talked to, uh, I believe that, if, my, if I remember correctly, his number for the number of Retina 1As produced was more about 490,000. Uh, but at any rate, if you are interested in retinas, you should definitely check out the link in the description to the Histo Retina Historical Society. They are very friendly and extremely, extremely knowledgeable people. A few things not to do with your, sh with your camera. Don't touch the shutter. That also, by proxy, means don't take apart the lens. Don't leave your camera or lens in your car because heat damage can and will ruin a leaf shutter. Oil will get onto the blades and it just won't work properly anymore. And don't store your gear in a plastic bag because fungus will grow on the leather or on the lens. And don't let your camera get wet because it will rust some of the components. And these are old cameras and they are fragile. And one other thing is to be very gentle with the frame counting and film advance mechanism, there's a very, very small spring in that mechanism that, if it breaks, prevents the camera from operating properly, it will prevents it from operating at all, and there is no replacement part available for it. 
So just remember your camera is a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. And if this video was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. If you have any questions or suggestions about this or for future videos, let me know. I'm pretty responsive. And if, uh, um, if I have the technical knowledge and equipment to make a video you suggest, I'm more than happy to. If you'd like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos coming out about cameras and photography and digital and film and all of these great things, please just click the subscribe button. And one last thing before we go to sample images taken with this very camera, thank you guys for watching. I only had this camera for one outing before the shutter stopped working. I bought it broken and managed one roll, and so that's okay by me. I love its bigger brother, the Retina 2A. The little 1A is simply not as capable. Without a rangefinder, it's very tricky to use well. For fun, it's okay. For display, it will always be an attractive camera. But the Retina 1A represents simultaneously everything I dislike and everything I love about Kodak cameras. The 1A is very well built and solid, and with care, it can last a very long time, and its quality makes all of the other subpar and average Kodak cameras look that much worse. It was an entry-level camera, but Nagel Works put as much care and respect into its design and construction as they did professional-grade cameras. And the Retina 1A and its siblings make me wonder why, and make me mad that Kodak didn't do the same with more of their cameras.